Hey, Celine. Could you hurry it up and make me something to eat now? I'm tired from my super long day of working today. And my stomach has been rumbling for the past two hours now. So get going and make me some food. Huh? You're not the only one who's really tired right now from their day. I'm with your dad right now taking care of him, so could you please make something for yourself tonight? Huh? Why do I have to be told what to do by someone who doesn't even leave this house to go to work? You've been in this house all day long, so you make me my food. Why should I have to do anything here when you've had all day to prepare me something? That's how things should work. Hey, I work a remote job right now from this house, and while doing so, I'm also caring for your father. So don't think that I'm just laying around all day doing nothing here. So, that means you're the head of caring for everyone, right? Well, if that's the case, then you should be doing all the cleaning in this house as well. <laughs> this house smells like crap right now. Shouldn't taking care of that smell be your responsibility or something? Huh? I don't think there's any kind of bad smell right now in the house. What are you supposedly smelling? It smells like a pigsty. It's that smell that comes off old people, like my dad. Perhaps your nose is good for nothing now, since you've been around him all this time? <laughs> well, if the smell is alright with you, then so be it. But I want you to make me my food right now. I am tired from my very long day of work. So hurry the hell up and make me dinner. What the heck has gotten into you, seriously? Why do you think you have any right to be talking to me like that right now, Mandy? I'm in the same boat as you right now, working a job all day long. A job that can be done from the comfort of your bed shouldn't even be considered a job. I actually leave this house and work all day long, sweating my butt off making money. So don't you even begin to compare yourself to me. I cannot believe you. The reason I am in this house right now is to care for your guys' bedridden father while Mike is out of the house for work. And yet, this is how I'm going to be talked to by you? Who cares what you think about yourself being in this house? The fact that you even think of yourself as someone important just grosses me out. We are your family, so of course you had to come out here while Mike's gone to take care of us. Well then, why are you, of all people, not doing anything to help out right now? This is your father, after all, who you are related to by blood. Huh? Like I've been saying, I am tired. Are you even listening to me right now? Something like taking care of my bedridden dad should be left to my older brother's wife to take care of. <laughs> and I like to think you should be thanking me right now for not making an even bigger fuss about this crappy smell in the air. This is your own father, Mandy. Well, he smells like dog crap. <laughs> Now, once you've gone and lit a candle or something, come and make me dinner, all right? I want this house to smell like flowers or something, so that I don't have to smell my dad's stank while eating my meal. <laughs> Understood? So for the past six months or so, have things always been like that there? Yes, Greg. I came here for the sake of taking care of your father, and so I've just been taking all this crap from her, but I cannot do this anymore. Recently, she hasn't even been coming back to the house anymore, and when she does, she only wants me to take care of her while she does whatever she wants. It's better that she just stay out of this house, as I can actually take time to focus on my job and your father. So honestly, I hope she gets the hint. I can't believe it. She... She's never acted like that around me, and if she did... For some reason, she really just doesn't like the fact that I'm staying in your father's house. Which is strange, because if I were to leave this place, she'd never be able to manage anything. Hey now, Celine, you should have told me all about this a whole lot sooner. I couldn't say this to any of you. You've been out of state for over six months now, doing one of the most important jobs ever, right? You shouldn't have to be worried about your father or your sister any while you're out there, since there's not much you can do anyway from there. So I just held myself together for as long as I could and took whatever your sister's been giving me. Thank you so much for thinking about me. 
and I'm so sorry for what you've gone through. I'm sure all of this has really changed your perspective about my family. Hey, you don't have to worry. I'm sorry. None of this is your fault, as your sister has only herself to blame. I really love your father, after all, so doing everything I can to care for him is what I've wanted. But, of course, there's still Mandy. No. She's going to be my responsibility now. I never knew that she was that toxic deep down. And as of right now, I am so thankful of the fact that you've left your own home to move in with my father and do everything from the chores to the cooking for him. You told me you'd do everything for him, and that makes me so happy. So I wanted to help out too, by supporting you. You did say quite a few times that you'd come around to help at some point. I know. Yet this whole time, you've been doing pretty much everything for both my father and I. I just wish I could be there to help. I feel like a liar for not being there with you both. But what about your sister and what she'll have to say when you come back? She might think that you're lying to her when you have a talk and might think that I'm the one forcing you to speak up. Well, I suppose that could always happen. Actually, very recently, I felt something off about Mandy as well. I've started to think that one of the reasons she's always out of the house now is because she's cheating. I see. Recently she has been out of the house more than she's been around us, so I could definitely see her going out and having an affair right now. Although the only thing she'd been telling me is that she's busy with work right now and has to stay later in the evening to finish things up. Does Mike have any idea that this is going on right now? Mike is always very busy with his own work, and so he never has any time to talk with me about Mandy at all. There was one time I had a chance to talk with him about her, and so he did give her a warning about her attitude and such. But that didn't seem to faze her at all. And, well, Mike's always been a bit soft when it comes to drama like this. He has been trying his best to help out around the house, though, when he is home and has time. Is that right? So while I've been away, a lot of things have changed with all of you. Well, anyway... I'm really sorry for all the things that have happened to you, Celine, and I appreciate the fact that you're still continuing to stay with my dad and take care of him. Just... I can't believe that Mandy's not doing anything at all to care for her dad. It's... saddening, to say the least. I always thought that since Mandy's mother has passed away, and she was left with only her dad and brother to raise her, she'd be really thankful towards them. That's what I was thinking for a while as well. Seeing her behave the way she is now, it's just depressing and unbelievable. I have an idea about this. I don't want to believe that Mandy's really that kind of person deep down. So I think right now is the perfect chance to give it one last go at seeing if she's still the Mandy I thought she was or not. Hmm? Hey, Greg, are you doing alright? I heard that while you've been out of state on that business trip, you got yourself a bit hurt. That's right. I should be out of this hospital pretty soon here. But for a while, I'm going to have to stay in a wheelchair until I'm 100% again. I'm sorry. For the time being, I'm going to need your help with things at home, since I really don't have any way of getting everything done by myself. Of course. I'm your wife, after all, so I'll make sure you're taken care of. The only thing is, right now I've been very busy with work and everything, so in terms of timing it might be a bit difficult for me. But right now, Celine is at my dad's house. So she can help you out when you're here, and I'll try my best to help out when I can. Thank you for your quick response, Mandy. And as for Celine, I'll never be able to repay her for all she's done here. You have that right. I really am thankful for what she's done. But I'm sure her taking care of everyone is so much fun, right? So you really don't have to feel sorry about her when she has to spend all day doing things for you and Dad, right? Hmm. Well, perhaps she does like doing all this. Anyhow, for the time being, I want you to just be focused on getting your legs all healed up again so that you can walk on your own. Now, I need to get back to work. It seems you've been working way more than you normally did back before I left on my trip. Tell me, from what time until what time do you have to work every day? Huh? Well, 
that all depends on the day, so I can't give you a very good answer to that. But just be aware that I've normally been having to work from early morning to late night. That's why I'm never able to help Celine with anything at home. Is that so? Have you and her been doing all right together? Of course. But when it comes to her, she can sometimes be too easy to upset. There are definitely times when her and I will have little arguments and such. But I'm an adult, so I know how to handle all of that back talk from her. You don't have to worry about any of it. I see. Well, as long as you have it all under control with her, then I can relax. I'm sorry for taking up some of your time, Mandy. Good luck with the rest of your work today. Thank you. And you take care as you get ready to be released from that hospital. Hey, Celine, you're going to have to take care of my husband from now on as well, all right? Please and thank you. You've been in charge of caring for my dad this whole time, so you should be all right caring for another person, right? Thanks. I'm sorry, but I am not caring for him. Huh? What are you talking about? If you're not going to do it, then who else will? <laughs> not only have you not been taking care of your own father, but now you're going to have someone else care for your husband, too? Are you kidding me, Mandy? And like I'd said, you're in charge of caring for everyone around here, all right? <laughs> Why should I have to do any of that crap when you're the one who does it? It's not like you have anything else going on, and so far all you've been doing is squatting in our house without having to pay to be here, right? Excuse me? Squatting? The reason I'm having to live with you right now in this house is because I am taking care of your father for you. I never came to this place to just sit around all day and do nothing, okay? Would you just shut up already? Take care of Greg for me. I am very, very busy with work right now. I'd love to care for my husband and my dad, but I physically can't right now. I'm in the same situation, yet you don't see me whining about it, do you? I'm putting in that extra 10% of effort each day to make sure your father is comfortable and living. Things will only get tougher as your dad gets older and as Greg comes home, so just do your best to make things work. Ugh, this is pissing me off. Please, for God's sake, take care of my freaking husband. I have no idea how to care for another person, and I have a lot of work that I need to attend to every day. All you have to do is help your husband out with the things he can't do on his own, all right? Things like pushing his wheelchair around for him when he goes out and lifting things up for him that he can't get out on his own. It's all not that hard of stuff, so come on and stop the whining already. Ugh, stop that. Hey, how much longer do you plan to stay away from this house without saying anything to anyone? Have you not been around to take care of Greg at all? I told you, I have a lot of things to do at work. You should be the one to take care of him, right? You and him seem to get along so well with one another. <laughs> you keep on giving me the excuse that you're so busy with work every day, but how busy are you now where you haven't even been able to come home for days? This is a world that a shut-in like yourself would never be able to understand. <laughs> you poor, poor child. <laughs> By the way, you are a freaking stranger to me, so I'm not going to listen to you telling me what to do. So, this really means you're not going to do anything else for Greg, then? It already sounds like you've been ignoring all his calls and texts now, so I can't blame him for being really sad right now about his own wife ignoring him. I have no plans of going back to that house to care for Greg. You do it for me. <laughs> oh, but make sure you take care of him and my dad well enough that things don't smell like crap again, all right? <laughs> So that's the real kind of woman you are. What? Greg? Uh, what's going on with you right now? The real kind of woman? What do you mean by that? I'm talking about all that stuff you were saying to Celine. So this whole time, you haven't seemed to care at all about your father or myself, and would rather have your sister-in-law care for us instead of you. 
Wait, I never said anything like that. I still care about you both. I just happen to have a lot of work that I need to take care of still. And, well, that keeps me from coming home a lot of the time. Right now, if there is anything I'm physically able to do for you guys, I'll do it because I really, really want to. You liar. I heard all about this from Celine already, okay? While I was away on that business trip that got cut short by the accident, you went and forced Celine to do everything for both your father and you. You would even force her to do the most simple of things like cooking you dinner and lighting a candle. Things that a woman your age should be able to do easily. And during those times, I am busy with work, so I had no choice but to have her help. How many times do I have to tell you this, Greg? Right now, it feels like you all are trying to pick on me and the work I'm having to do. Yesterday, I gave your office a call. Your manager, or the man who was your manager, told me you quit your job there half a year ago. Huh? Why would you call my office like that without asking me first? Shush. What did he mean by, you quit your job half a year ago and haven't been back to that office since? What happened to all those excuses you've kept on using, saying you've been so very busy with work? I just changed jobs half a year ago is all, Greg. By the way, I explained all of this to you before. Do you not remember any of this? I was never given any explanation from you, Mandy. Now quit your lying and tell me the truth for once. Tell me the truth about how for the past six months now, you've been cheating on me with another man. What? When I had to leave for that trip, you found it to be the perfect chance for you to go out and meet with another man multiple times, right? What am I saying? You've gone out to see him pretty much every day for the past six months now leaving Celine at home to take care of your father and all the housework. You're a real dick for doing something like that. Why do you... But you were out of the state for work, right? In order to get all the evidence I needed of you cheating, I hired someone to go and investigate you further. The investigator was able to get an audio recording from the man you've been with, and was even able to get other evidence to help me solidify the case. But Greg, I had no other choice, all right? For the past six months, I've been totally lonely here without you. I've been having to worry about my father as well as deal with my job all while you were never around me. You haven't been caring for your father or working for the past half a year, asshole. Stop it with all your incessant lies. No, wait, I, I was about to say... No, you weren't. I knew what was going on, but I wanted to give my wife the benefit of the doubt and trust that this was all just one huge misunderstanding on my part. That's why I told you I had injured my legs. I was really hoping that by hearing about your husband losing the ability to walk for a while, you'd come back to me and prove that you had always been mine. But instead, you continued to use your fake job as an excuse, and not only were you not taking care of me, but you wouldn't even come back home! What? Huh? What are you going on about? Wait, you're telling me that your legs being all messed up was a giant lie? I made that all up in order to see who the real you was. But now, I'm well aware of who you are. You're an asshole for lying to me about something like that. I'm not going to take that from a bitch that's been cheating on me for six months and lying about it! We are getting a freaking divorce now! I'm sure you knew this was coming though, right? I already hired a lawyer with me, so I'll get to work with him and make sure you pay me for every lie you've ever told. I hope your six months away from work didn't use up all of your savings! Wait, 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 wait a second. Hey! Hey, do something about all of this. Things have really turned upside down for me, alright? You were the one cheating this whole time, so this is exactly what you deserve. I have no reason to be helping you get out of that mess now, and actually I really can't wait for you to burn in hell after this. <laughs> Jesus, you are such a freaking witch, do you know that? 
me going out and having fun with another man has nothing to do with you, right? That's totally right. And that's why your problems that you're facing now have nothing to do with me. The only people that I have anything to do with now are your father, Greg, and Mike. Wait, so does this mean you knew about how Greg had been lying to me? Oh, you're talking about how he faked having bad legs? I knew about that. Greg didn't want to believe that you were really as toxic as you are, so he lied in order to see if you were really faithful to him or not. That poor man, Greg. <laughs> if he was lying to you, then you should have told my dad or something. Why would you play along with Greg and trying to set me up like that? Are you still not aware? Right now, your father is on his last leg and has been suffering from dementia. What? This whole time I've been taking care of him, he's been calling me Mandy instead of Celine. He would always say things like, I'm sorry, Mandy, I'm sorry. Is that right? This whole time, your father's been thinking that you've been taking care of him, even though it's me. I'm sure for him, that's the best outcome, as he wouldn't have been as happy knowing his daughter was never around to care for him. He would have had to learn that the daughter he raised all by himself would rather go out and cheat on her husband than stay home to care for her loving father. That's all been going on? Dad thought I've been the one caring for him? Are you starting to understand now? Well, I'm sorry, but it's too late now. We're having you kicked out of the house. But you'll be just fine with that, right? Huh? You want me out of my own dad's house? Why do you of all people think you can choose to do something like that? that to me? That place isn't even your house. I'm sorry to say this, but I have every right to kick you out. After all, this house is Mike's. Ever since your father became older and fell ill, Mike has been the one paying things off, like the loan. But in order to do so, he had to have his name on the place, so your father gave it to him. And from what Mike has told me, he's cutting ties to you for being such a heartless and self-centered woman. So the only thing you can do now is come here and get your things. What? All of this and that going on in my life right now? And now you're going to make me an outcast, huh? Shut up, you were the one who casted your whole family out. Now you get your butt over here and grab all your things. Hey, come on now. I get it already. I messed up. But from now on, I'll make sure to take care of my dad, okay? There is no longer any chance for you, Mandy. Nobody can trust you anymore, and none of us want to anyway. It's over for you. Pack it up and get out of our lives. Wait! Hey, Mandy, what the frick is all of this about now? You got divorced from Greg, and the whole family has said goodbye to you forever. Just because you've come all the way back to this house again doesn't mean anyone is going to let you back in. Do you understand that? I know that, but... But I... I can't live on with the way things are. Because of that settlement I had to pay Greg, I am in really bad debt now. And so far I've had to live life without a job and a house. Why are you still whining like you're a victim? You were the one who caused all of this, and now you're having to pay up for what you'd asked for. I don't care that your life sucks now and that you're too immature to handle it. You deserve to not live on too much longer. What the hell? I had no other choice but to come all the way back home. Both my brother and Greg have gone and blocked me, so you're my only hope now. I had no other choice but to come here and see you. I am doing everything I can to stay alive, all right? And your father is in the same boat. What? Your dad did everything he could to stay alive, and I mean everything. He would go saying he was sorry for all the actions his daughter had taken to people like myself and Greg and Mike while trying to go through rehab. Yet while all of that had been happening, you continued to ignore him and never bothered to even stop by and say hi. Wait, but I... And over time, as things started to get worse again, he began to call me Mandy, thinking that you'd actually come around to wanting to care for your own father. 
This all has been hell for me because I've had to watch as a poor old man who did everything for his daughter got ignored by her and treated like he was nothing. Well, if it's so bad for you, then why don't you leave that house now? Huh? I mean, my father is still calling you Mandy, thinking that you're me, right? Well then, if you leave that house and let me in, then the problem can be solved and you'll no longer have to feel bad for him. I will be able to live there again and I can take care of him now, all right? I know better than to fall for that. You just want to be back in here so that you can have a free place to crash again, right? I'm done with you. No point in talking with you anymore, is there? If you're going to continue hanging out in front of this house, then I'm going to call the police and have them get you off our property. Hey, come on now, please! At least let me come in and take a shower or something. I haven't had a shower in weeks. Just let me clean myself off, please. I can't do that or else you'll stink up the inside of this house. <laughs> I have to remember what you said to me and do my job and make sure the inside of this house doesn't start smelling like crap. <laughs> After that, Mandy used a rock from out in the yard to bust through the glass front door and made her way into the house. But before she could even get herself into the shower, the police showed up and tackled her to the bathroom floor while she was only in her underwear. They handcuffed her and took her out to a squad car, where they then went and took her away to the county jail. She was taken to court later that week and charged with breaking and entering and vandalism for breaking down the front door of the house. These two charges would only add fuel to the fire that was her debt, as she would now have to owe us even more money through a settlement. Her secret boyfriend from before had run off after Greg went and got a settlement from him as well. So now Mandy is truly all on her own as she goes back to the streets to live as a homeless again. But not too long after, she was arrested again, for robbery this time, and would be put into jail for a year. But at least she has a place to sleep and clean up now. I hope that place will teach her a couple of unforgettable lessons, or at the very least, keep her from being a public menace for the next year. As for myself, I'm still living at home with my father-in-law, Greg and my husband, where Greg and I have been working to take good care of everything. I still have to work full-time remotely, but things have lightened up a bit with Greg around the house during the afternoon to help out. Mike, unfortunately, still has a lot on his plate when it comes to his job, but he said it'll only be a few more months before he's able to come around the house more and help us all out. My father-in-law is still calling me Mandy and thinks that I really am her, which is a bit upsetting to me at times, but I think this is best for everyone, as he'll never have to find out how truly disgusting his daughter really is. There are still plenty of difficult things to do here, but without Mandy around causing trouble anymore, things seem a lot more peaceful and enjoyable. <laughs>